The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 12th, the magnificent Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, hey, we've got you covered there, too. You can go ahead and send me an email, just like uh, David and Nicholas have done. Send that to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside that subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get to this show on a magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a slightly mixed bag out there. That mix coming from the semis, which are off four points, basically flat out there. Otherwise, you got the Dow up 251, S&P up 35, NASDAQ up 94, Russell's up 12. Now, we're not going to overlook the SMHs because if there's a market top, you might see that in the SMHs first. So we'll certainly take a look at the semiconductors. You've got the uh, gold is trading up 11 bucks, trading out of 1740. Silver's up 95 cents. That's 5% to the upside. Big move there, trading out 1973. Lights recruit up a buck 20. Natural gas up 30. 32 cents through your treasury, basically flat at 133.16. Now, lead the charge dollar wise to the upside. You got booking holdings up 33 bucks, one and seven tenths percent. Mercado Libre up 20 bucks, a little over two percent. Then Tix Biosciences up 56 percent, 13 bucks. United Health up 10 bucks, nearly two percent. Humana up by nearly 10 bucks, nearly two percent as well. To the downside is SBB Financial off 12 bucks or three percent. Al Nylum Pharmaceuticals down 12 bucks, 5%. MicroStrategy, 11 bucks, 4%. Regeneron is down 1%. That's seven, eight, nearly 8 bucks. Amgen is off 8 bucks. And Change, that's down 3.5%. So what do you want to look at? I want to look at what you want to look at. Uh, these requests here are for individual stocks. Let's just take a quick peek at the general markets uh, out here. So let's start by taking a look at uh, the equity future contracts. We'll take a look at this set here, the black background chart. So what we'll see here is that uh, two of the four are in breakout mode. Now, what I mean by that is prices taken out their daily resistance levels. That's the top of their profiles. That is where sellers reside. Well, now it might be buyers reside if price pulls back to those levels. So in the ES Mini, that area to watch is 4067. Short of that, price wants to continue to move higher. You can see prices also right now today taking out a descending trend line. Same trending, descending trend line, so to speak, as the NQ. But what the NQ has not done, it's attempted to, but has not done just yet, is taking out the top of its daily profile. That's a 12776. 12, That's the area to be watching. If price can close above that, then the ES and NQ will be signaling a further move higher. We'll take a look at where those further move buyers can be. We switch over to our white background charts. But in the meantime, if we take a look at the, well, take the, take that back. The Dow too, the Dow equity. Uh, so the Dow and the ES, the Dow and the ES many are the ones that have taken out uh, the tops of their profiles. The NQ has not, nor has the Russell. So they're just consolidating with inside them. So in the case of the Russell 2000, its resistance level is 1920. It's gotten up to about 1915 this morning. If price can close above 1920, it's going to say rally on. Now let's go switch over. Give me a moment here. We'll go take a look at the ES Mini and at least the NQ out here and see what their multi-time frame charts are signaling to you and I. 
So let's change the screens. We'll have the black background screens, or the white background screens, I should say, out here momentarily. In the upper left, you've got the uh, ES Mini from a monthly time frame. You know, it's got a nice TD9 count top. Took price right back to its breakout level of support, 36.7825. Now, that's going to be a real key level if the markets ever do head lower. It takes out that area, that key level of support, or that sets up a move back to the uh, 2020 potential lows out there. But uh, we'll take things one step at a time. That is not the current message. In the case of the weekly message out here, the weekly message shows that price is trading between, and what I have, I'll just expand out the chart here and just explain the, the dashed lines, the uh, diagonal lines that you're seeing, which are nothing more than the solid lines are actual channel lines. And the difference between a trend line and a channel line is this. A channel line, what we're taking a look at is either the open or close, the body of the candle is really what we're looking at. It doesn't matter whether it's an open or close. You're trying to find at least three consecutive touch points out there, and that becomes our channel. But there's also the trend. There's that screaming Mimi out there. That's that uh, bar uh, where you've got a uh, large wick to the upside or the downside out there. Uh, that's just simply the activity that occurred during that trading session, which really the open and close that are important to us. Nonetheless, the trend lines are taking a look at those screaming memes, those upper shadows and lower shadows out there. Right now, I'm really focused on the upper shadows out there, and that's the dash lines. So if price, in fact, can clear this uh, channel area, which ES Mini has already done, it's really kind of waiting on a signal from the NQ, I believe, then what price should do is get up to that trend line. That trend line is really the area where you would like to be able to put in a potentially put in a sell. We may not get up there, but that's what I'd be looking at for the ES Mini. If we take a look at the daily time frame, and we ignore intradays right now. The daily time frame is saying, hey, Stevie, I'm above the top of the profile, above the oscillator and change line. I should at least get back to this gap to the downside from back in the uh, time frame of, uh, when was that? A second here. That was uh, the trading day of August the 22nd at about the 43, 42.35 area out there. So the daily chart is suggesting you and I want to move higher. The weekly chart's waiting for that signal to come in from the NQ. And if I look at the intraday charts, the 30-minute chart, there is no topping signal out here. Now, there's probably an A to B equal CD pattern. And so you did have that bear sash. So if I just open this up, yeah, surely there's all kinds of A to B equal CD pattern. So it does have a topping pattern, Stevie. So you got a topping pattern here. Price gets below that oscillator and change line on a 30-minute basis, which is currently at 41.21. That is suggests price moving back to the 41.04 level, the top of that current profile. The 60-minute time frame chart does not have a topping signal, nor does the uh, two-hour chart. The uh, four-hour chart negated its TD9 count top. And uh, if we get a close at 2 o'clock above 41.15, 41.15, that's the number you want to write down in your pad of paper out there. We're trading right now at 41.20. Then the five-hour chart will negate its TD9 count top two. And so just go back to that 30-minute uh, chart out there that had that confirmed sell the D point. Really kind of a weak signal at this stage here. That's if at 2 o'clock the ES Mini is closed above its TD9 count top. And if it does that, and the NQ close above the top of that profile, right? You wrote that down in your pad of paper. That's at the 12,776 level. Then it's going to be rally on. At least that would be the signals from the uh, charts out there. Let's go switch over, take a look at the NQ. The NQ is the thorn in the side of this rally right now. Why? Because it's run right into those sellers at the top of its profile. Now, you see, that was the top of the profile on the black background charts. The top of the profile on the white background charts is down to 12,516. And sometimes, even though we use the same data, two charting applications will generate different results. Well, that's why we use them both. So it's still that 12,776 level that's going to be the key number for the NQ. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. inflation where your purchasing power is eroded there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold vista gold's flagship asset is the mount todd gold project in the northern territory of australia this is australia's largest undeveloped gold project we are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district this is a large-scale low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back up, folks. Dow's up 249, S&P's up 36. Let's get to a couple of questions that, that kind of have come in here. Uh, so we've got three. Let's take a look at the first one inside the Tiger's Den. It's from SNP. Wants to take a look at ticker symbol URNM. So that's what we've got up on our screens here for you. URNM is the uh, Sprott Uranium Miners ETF out here. So we take a look at it. I've drawn in on the daily time frame chart, left-hand panel out here. You can see the blue lines. That represents the A to B equals CD pattern. Actually completed the one-to-one -one level when it created that little bear sash candle out there on September 1st. But that was taken out. That pattern has been negated. So it still has an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. It's achieved this uh, level where it got up to at the 82 uh, 28 ish or 82 40 level. That was the one to 1.272, but no bearish reversal candle. It does have a top. It does have a wave seven top. And if we don't take out uh, Friday's high, that wave seven top, that's part of the Chapman wave, a very small part of it. That could suggest a pullback back to the top of the profile, 78.60 or the oscillator and change on which is green at 77.51. Price would have to close below 77.51 for that uh, wave number seven, that letter G out there to really gain some traction and suggest that we're headed to do something more than just test support out there. In the case of the weekly chart, last week S&P was bar number nine of its 89 count. Now, also an A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here would need a bearish reversal candle, as would now URNM for the daily time frame to convert a daily, another daily sell the D point pattern. So you do have a TD9 count top. It's also under change line, has changed colors. If you're long this position, I would just uh, remain, I would remain long, but be very cautious now. And I'd be watching, um, what would I be watching short-term time frame support levels? Well, if that's what Steve would be watching, then S&P would probably want to be watching that too. So let's go look at a 30-minute time frame out here. So let's pull over the 30-minute chart, take a look at it, see what kind of signals we've got here. And uh, we've got nothing more than sideways movement as we speak right now. The key level here to be watching S&P here at 79, 78 is all the way down at 75, 63. If price were to break below that, that could be signaling something more dangerous, not dangerous, but more uh, more of a retracement or a pullback out here with the weekly at a, a TD9 count top and the uh, daily at wave number seven. The monthly chart not giving us any kind of a sell signal, just a consolidation. And it's a large one between 55, 70 and 104 out there. So I hope that that helps you out. If you're long the position, 
I'd stay with it. I'd be, uh, I would be uh, careful with it. I'd adjust my stop. The average daily price movement on this ETF is three dollars and forty-four cents. It would be some, um, some um, Fibonacci expansion of that, like one point two seven two or one point six one eight times that level. Uh, less, uh, you know, Friday's close, today's close, something along those lines, just to have some kind of protection in place on your trade. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for uh, the request. Let's go to the next request. This is coming in from Nicholas A. And Nicholas says, good morning, Steve. Hope you had a great long weekend. I did. Thanks, Nicholas. And by the way, folks, I was out last Thursday and Friday. I will be out this Thursday and Friday as well. We'll be, re we'll be returning on uh, Monday. So Nicholas goes on to say, would you mind going over UVXY, please? Um, so we will do that. So the only way that I have found, only consistent way that I have found that uh, to provide us with good information from a trading standpoint for the UVXY is the TAS market profiles. And here is the, and it's trading this vehicle on a very short term uh, time frame. I've got up here the three minute time frame. It's really the three or two. minute. now I have not done um, uh, what I'll call extraordinary work on the UVXY. It's just when we have had requests for it and we've tried to find some way to assist folks that are trading these types of vehicles, this is what I have really come back to, which is the profiles. And what you're really looking for are momentum trades, the way that they begin the day. And again, the bottoms of the profiles are support. When those get broken, such as we just had here on the two minute time frame, and that support level, well, where's my data box? Let's get a data box out here. That would help. Well, it, says, it says we're out here, so that's a bummer says we're out here and I don't see one. How does that happen? That's really a great question. So, you know, my system, I was out over the weekend. This morning there was some kind of Microsoft upgrade and it has seemed to have screwed up a number of things. I don't know that it's associated with this, but in the case of UVXY, Nicholas, the, uh, you know, and I, don't know, I don't know specifically what you're asking other than could I mind, would I mind going over it, please? Here's the three minute time frame chart. Price also at the last three minutes closing just below the bottom of its profile, 924 out there. So it's really the task market profiles and from a momentum standpoint on a very short term time frame chart out there, um, this is what I found to be the best. Now, I'll go back and take a look at the VIX index itself. So we'll do that and see what kind of signals we have out here. So we'll get to that momentarily for you, uh, Nick. Um, Here we go. VIX symbols. Okay, so here's what we know about the VIX itself, which, uh, you know, you, you, it's gonna maybe different than, uh, I don't know what futures contracts are in UVXY. So first, go look at that. If you if you got you to gotta research that. And then you want to have access, you'd like to have access to those futures contracts as well out there. But with regard to the cash VIX index out here, uh, it is still trading below its 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day, that's weird. Even this data box has shifted. There we go. Uh, the, uh, excuse me. So the 50 day is at 2415. We've been below it now for two solid days. This would be day number three if it closes below that level. And what that suggests to me, Nick, is that the spot volatility should move down to the lower Bollinger Band. Now, the Bollinger Band readings that we're taking a look at here, did I change? Oh, I didn't even change screens. Good Lord. Hold on a second here. Sorry about that. Nobody must be listening because I didn't get any two by fours upside the head. But here, and so that's terrible. Now I got to go back and show you the UVXY charts. Not that that's terrible, but the terrible thing is that I didn't have the chart or I didn't have the screens ready. So here now we're taking a look at spot volatility. And if it does close below 24.15 today, it's suggesting to move down to that 50 to 1 Bowler Japan reading, which is down in the 21.26 area. Now that you combine that, if the ES Mini can close above the center of its. Uh, weekly profile that's at 4121 the combination of those two things suggests that the spot volatility should go lower and that the es mini should move higher and that higher one level would be the 4355 area that we'd be taking a look at let me go back to the uh, black background charts all the way over here so you can see those profile levels for the two or three minute or i can put whatever time frame it is that i want up here here is the three minute time frame but here's just the perfect here's the perfect example of how somebody could have been long uvxy stayed long up until exactly, if they were conservative traders for sure, exactly 11.18, and then simply got out of that trade. A, a, um, a more aggressive trader waited for that second bar to complete, that was 11.21, but that would have then taken them out as well. So now you'd be taking a look at the other side of this trade. So for those of you that want to trade short term, my recommendation is get the task market profiles, 
get them so that they're on your uh, charts out there. Of course, each charting package uh, can, can produce different results, so make sure before you start trading that it's providing the results that you're looking for out there, that it's working the way that I just kind of showed you that it should out there, and I think it'd be okay to uh, trade that. But I really think you want to do that trading, believe it or not, on a very intraday, very intraday time frame chart. I wouldn't tell anybody to go trade the ESPN on a two-minute or a three-minute uh, time frame out there. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, Nick, thanks so much for writing in. Let's go to, well, we won't go to our next question. We will when we get back, and that's from David Hayes, who wants to take a look at TMO. Too much information, that'd be TMI. TMO is what, time warning? I don't know. TMO is what? Let's go find out. TMO is Thermo Fisher Scientific, which is uh, trading out uh, right now at uh, 579 and a quarter. So we'll look at this for David H. as soon as we get back from this break. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow up 305, S&P 45, NASDAQ 100, 142. We're taking a look at ticker symbol TMO. TMO is the uh, Thermo Fisher Scientific. This is for David H. in Panama City. Hey, David uh, writes in. He says, hey, Steve, is it possible that TMO will reach the 600 area by Friday? He's got the 575 calls expiring on September 16th. So as we look at the daily time frame chart out here, what did this bottom with? Did it hold? It's it. So it was an A to B equals CD bottom that formed out here on September the 1st. 
Price is now above the top of its daily profile, above its oscillator and change line. Its target, I can't tell you it's by Friday, but its target is 998.71. That's the daily time frame. The weekly time frame really sort of shows a sideways consolidation move out here. Uh, so that suggests with price above its green oscillator and change line over time wants to make its move to 607. Did I say 908? I should have said 598. Uh, yeah, 598 on the daily uh, daily uh, uh, level where price wants to go target, TD9 count breakdown area. So you got 598 and 607. And the uh, monthly time frame chart price is trading in the support of its bullish structured profile, which is held for quite a while. So this has had a lot of sideways movement out there. I mean, you want to see the consolidation? Just look at the monthly chart. So your question is, you know, can this get up to uh, 600, 600 by Friday? So you're going to have to look at the short term time frame charts out here. So here is a 30 minute time frame chart. You're about to, well, you've completed a TD9 count top. Price is above the top of the profile, David, and it is trading sideways and it's above its green oscillator and change line. So what you're looking for here is a close above, doesn't have to be during this next half hour, 1130 to 12, but you would like to see a close above 580.12 on a 30 minute bar. Not a 10 minute bar, not a five minute bar, a 30 minute bar. If you get a close above 580.12, then the next area of resistance is at 583.92. I know it's not that much higher. If price can take out 583.92, then 590.24 will become the next level of resistance. So what I want to be able to do for you is explore where the battleground sites are. So let me add a little bit more time to this chart out here. I just have 30 days. Let me add 60 days. See if anything else pops up. But those would be the areas for you to be watching and observing. So it's 583.92. It's 590.24. And after that, then that's what would get you back to the 600 level. So you don't need me to answer the question as much as you'd like me to answer the question, as much as I would like to be able to answer the question. Instead, what I can do is give you the data to watch so that the market answers that question for you, because it is way more intelligent than Stevie's son here. So if price can take out that 30-minute TD9 count top. That's what you want. That supports what we looked at in the daily and the weekly time frame. But those battles, you've got to watch at 583.92, 590.24, and above that, then you should be able to get to the 600 level. It still doesn't tell me whether it's by Friday or not, but at least you know where those battles are so that you can then make your trading decisions. So, David H., thanks so much for taking the time to write in, and have a uh, magnificent Monday. A real quick check here, see if there's any other requests. I don't see one. Um... Uh, uh, let me go back inside. The, well, let me see here uh, inside the Tiger's Den, see if there was any request out there that I might have missed. Um, nope, nothing that I see out here. Okay, so we got through all the questions. So now let's do what? Um, let's do what? Let me, uh, what is the what? So we got five minutes here. Let's take a look at, let's go back to the NQ charts out there and just go ahead and, and, uh, uh, and, and do a little bit more of a thorough review. Because I really think the NQ is also, from the equity standpoint, is what's going to, and we'll look at the SMH is really what's going to help us understand what's going on here. So we took a look at the monthly, uh, the weekly chart out there, the daily time frame chart. Is, so on the daily time frame chart, this is where we stopped. Uh, we have had two different sets of profiles out there, which happens from time to time. And we like to use them both. Both of them are really helpful. Uh, they let us know where buyers and sellers resist out here. So again, that's at 12,776. We're 12,819 right now. It's on a closing basis, not at 1134 in the morning. But if price does close above this, then it's not unreasonable to think that price will make a run for the 13,651 level. That's a TD nine count breakdown area. If we look at a 30 minute time frame chart, and I'll just simply pull this back just a tad. You'll see a Rhodesman to indicator top. That was at 11 o'clock. Price is still above its oscillator and change on and consolidate with inside its profile. And price closed above 12, 838 and a quarter negates that signal and says that price continues to move higher. No topping signal on the 60 minute time frame chart, none on the 120, none on the 240. Well, the 240, in fact, negated its TD9 count top. Or we talked about, or maybe we didn't talk about it. I think we talked about the ES five hour chart, the NQ's five hour time frame is uh, just now on the bar following bar number nine that completes at 2 p.m. So if by today's close, the NQ closes above whatever the high of this uh, 2 p.m. bar is, right now that high is 12, 8, 38 and a quarter. I don't know that that's going to be the high. But if it does close above that high out there, that's going to say that you are in breakout mode inside the NQ. And again, that price target, short of some intraday signals, would be pointing to the 13,651 area out there. So that's what the equity charts are showing us. Let's go take a look at some other uh, charts out here. Let's take a look at, well, I mentioned the SMHs, right? I did. 
So let's go back to this three time frame chart out here and let's put in the SMHs. If the market, so you get the NQ up towards resistance, the SMHs, which we're trading just slightly lower, they're flat, they're up two bucks right now. So let's go see what the message of the uh, semiconductors are. And we're just ba waiting patiently to get that signal. So you have that confirmed by the D point pattern. That was confirmed with this bullish hammer candle. Now, that was a bullish hammer candle, it was a gap to the downside, so it wasn't really clear. Was it a bullish candle, a bearish candle out there? Well, does it really matter? Well, for the buy the D point, it really doesn't now. Why? Because you got a nice bull sash candle that took place on September the 7th. So that confirmed the buy the D point pattern. Now, price is trading above the top of its daily profile. And so the top of the daily profile is 216.73. Even though price was pulling back, it was just testing, in essence, its oscillator and change line and the top of the daily profile. So this still suggests if price closed above the top of that profile, 216.73, this should continue to rally further. The SMHs have traded into their descending trend line resistance area. They're actually just a little bit above that. So the next area of resistance on a weekly basis for the SMHs is at the 217.94 level. If price can close above 217.94, that tells us that price should go target the 225.45 area. The monthly time frame chart doesn't really have a bottoming pattern out here. So I won't really focus on that right now. The daily says just really pay attention to the top of that daily profile. Price closes above it, odds favor we move higher. The 30 minute time frame chart, just to get one of the short term intraday charts out here, if we look at a 30 minute time frame chart, we can see what? We can see that this is attempting to form a Rhodes momentum indicator top, but it does not have the required bearish reversal candle. Could get that during this session here. Uh, this session does not end for another uh, 20, uh, number 37, yeah, another uh, another 22, 23 minutes out here. Uh, the question is: Does price fight whether it does or doesn't? Does price find support at the bottom of its 30-minute profile? That's a 216 and a quarter. If it doesn't. Then this is suggesting a price pulling back to at least the gap, but maybe the breakout level of 209.78. The gap itself is at uh, 214.28 uh, to the uh, 211.81 area out there. But you don't have that bearish reversal candle just yet on a 30-minute basis, so too early to call there. So the SMH is I'll come back and default to watch the top of that profile at day's end for a signal. Uh, what do we want to look at uh, next? Let's go take a look at, well, we've got just a few seconds here, but uh, let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. Here's the ES spinning, but let's go take a look at Goldilocks, the December contract, please. Oops. And gold is trading out at uh, uh, 1742. I believe that is uh, above the center of its bullish structured daily profile. And that says if you close above the center of its bullish daily structured profile, we're just waiting for those charts here to populate. That's going to suggest a further run higher. So I guess we'll have to do that when we get back from this break. Just take a little time for these charts here to populate. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be back shortly. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up. We got the uh, sea of green out here. Even the semis are up just uh, slightly up three points. Dow's up 251 S&P, 40 points. And uh, why has my screen uh, stopped? That's never a good sign. Uh, hopefully, everybody can hear me out there. Uh, there we go. The screen is uh, back up. So uh, we'll go back to gold momentarily. We do have one more question that's come in. And I want to make sure that we get to all questions today. This one coming in from Hector and Patty. Hector and Patty write in. It says, hey, Steve-O, happy, marvelous uh, money-making Monday. I do like that. That's a beautiful thing. So we spent two hours this weekend reviewing your archive seminar, Mastering to Buy the D-Point Lightning Bolt, the best class ever. Uh, thank you very much. That's very cool. XLR appears to be gaining momentum as the volume is picking up today. Please give us a possible AB equals CD up target on the daily and the weekly. We love the daily low volume B point the XLE had on August 29th. Easy target to take out, Hector and Patty. Well, Hector... What we've got out here is, so this did form the sell the D point pattern. And, and as you know, and it did, you, you're not asking for this A to B equals CD. You're asking for a potential future one. Um, but that did result in price pulling back. And why did it find support where it did down at the $76 area? I don't know the answer to that question. Uh, it doesn't at least stick out to me. It's only not a bottoming pattern. And right now what price has done is the XLE has rallied right into resistance. So before we can take a look at a new A to B equals CD pattern out here. Price has got to take out the area where the sellers reside. And they reside between 8289 and 8373. Folks, the bottom, these DAC, here, I'll just expand out the chart so you're only looking at one thing, we're all looking at the same thing. Okay, the bottom lines here, these dashed lines, that's at the 8122 level. That is the bottom of the daily profile. That is where buyers reside. Now, when price closes below those levels out here from the two consecutive sell sessions, then old support, should have been support, can become resistance. Well, today we're seeing that that is no longer resistance. So it broken through resistance, Stevie. We're headed higher. Uh, not so fast. Because the center of a profile is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value between the range of 83.73 to 81.22, between the upper and the lower profile band. The upper profile is where the sellers are sitting. So the sniper's at 83.73. But because there's both buyers and sellers at 82.89, and that is closer in proximity to the top than the bottom, this is your sell zone out there. There's, we know that there's sellers located between 82.89 and 83.73. And so far, we've seen that that is what's transpired just looking at the daily activity. So before any new A to B equals CD patterns get formed out here, price has got to close above 83.73. And you rightly pointed out, price really has to take out that swing point from August 29th. And that's up at the 85.18 level. So whether it's low volume, 26 million as an example or not, doesn't really matter. Right now you're dealing with where the sellers reside. If price does close above that level, even without an A to B equals CD, Hector and Patty, our price target would be the TD9 count breakdown area at 90.54. On a weekly time frame, from the A to B equals CD side of the ledger out here, 
um, price has to still take out those highs in order to form that next B point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. So I really think it's too early to uh, to to do that out there. We really got to wait for the daily time frame chart to do its thing. And of course, we also need to wait for lights we crude to give us a breakout message. And I don't know that we've got that either, since there is a directional correlation between the energy sector and the uh, and lights we crude. If we take a look at the XLE, just looking for any kind of uh, short term signals out here. Um, here, there is an A to B equals CD. Uh, so I could just use my line tool here to draw that in. Whoops, that didn't work. That was kind of weird what that did there. You didn't see it, but I did. Uh, so here's the A to B line, A to uh, B. And then just a shallow retracement, we'll just simply take that line, draw that over here, and there's your C to D. And then you can see you got this nice little dark cloud candle that uh, is formed at 11 o'clock as so we came on the air. So what the XLE should do on a very short-term basis, Hector and Petty's target that oscillator and change line. That's currently printed at 81.70. Now that line might move higher as price moves sideways, but it's we should see a, a test of that line. If you get a test and rejection, then price should continue to head higher. That's the XLE. If you don't get a test and rejection, price close, comes through it, then price likely pulls back to 80.59 or 79.45. So right now I'd be mostly concerned with 82.89 to 83.73, Hector and Patty. And thanks so much for watching that uh, workshop. Glad that uh, it was the uh, best workshop ever. Uh, but uh, maybe you should watch the other ones. They you know, maybe could rank them between the best of the best out there. In any event, I do hope that that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and again, watch that workshop. Let's go back to gold. What I will do after we do gold is we'll pull up Lightspeed Crew just to get a feel for what it's doing here. But on a uh, daily time frame, you can see you've got a nice Rose momentum indicator bottom out here from the daily standpoint. That was confirmed on September 2nd. Now we know where the real, resist where the real resistance was at that uh, 1731 level, and we're above it. Do we close above it at the end of the day? I hope so. If we do get a close above it, then that's going to suggest to move up to the 1762.90 area. That's the top of its daily profile. If we look at a five-hour time frame chart out here, look for any kind of signals. There's no topping signal. There's resistance. 1749.80 is where the next battle for Goldilocks should be. That's its TD9 count breakdown area for the five-hour time frame. Four-hour time frame. It has TD9 count breakdown resistance also, and that's at 1749.80. So what you and I know is 1749.80 is a strong level of resistance. What's price going to do as it gets up to that area? That I don't know. But that's where the next real battleground is. If price takes that area out, that's just confirming what we just took a look at in the daily time frame, which is the t intent of price to go target 1762.90 out there. The 10-minute chart, it's got a TD9 count pattern. It's going to complete at 1150 exactly. So that suggests a short-term top and a pullback. So the real question boils down to this. At day's end, does gold close above 1731? And Stevie's not talking 1732. Well, are you talking 1733? Probably not. What are you talking? I'm not sure. We'd have to really wait and see it. But you really want a, at least a decent, sizable, I, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. You close above last Friday's high. That would certainly do it for you and me. If you do that, last Friday's high was at the 1740.50 area. You're only at 1743 right now. You haven't taken out uh, yesterday's or Friday's bottom, that is. That would be a bullish signal. And that would suggest the 1762 number is likely to happen. So I hope that uh, helps you out, whoever you was. We just simply, that might have been just Stevie as we went over and took a look at gold. Now let's go to Lightspeed Crude. Take a look at the October contract out here. Um, and uh, see what it is uh, doing. Uh, this to assist Hector and Patty with regard to their thinking on the energy sector trade, the XLE. So let's let this uh, populate out here. Obviously, I've got uh, you know I have a few too many things opening open right now, not opening, but open right now. That's what's taking just a little bit of time here for this to complete. So on a daily time frame, what you've got in Lights Week Crude is a new profile. No bottom signal, just a new profile. So the areas to watch there are going to be 8285 to the downside, that's support. And 9108 to the upside, that is resistance. You close above 9108, you're headed higher. Where? Back to the 98 ish area. You close below the uh, uh, 8285, you're headed lower. The five hour time frame chart is going to form a TD9 count top as it approaches TD9 count breakdown resistance, 8944. Does it guarantee the price is going to move back? It's not a guarantee, but likely to occur. And that pullback would want to go target that oscillator and change on all the way down to the 85 area. If the TD9 count pattern fails, meaning it completes the TD9 count, count, which will not complete until the uh, until the session close, 
But if price does take that out and close above the TD account breakdown area, that tells you we had higher. Okay, Stevie, had higher to where? 97.22 or 97.32. Four hour time frame chart, A to B equals CD pattern that's in play right now. The same thing on the 120 minute chart, but it does have a battle at 89.44. You've got a TD9 count top on the 60 minute time frame. So what is it that Light Tweet Crude is likely to do out here? I'd say by the end of the day, we start to see some kind of a pullback. Maybe the overnight session. We'll be right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and DSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, now, folks. We got a request out here from Jim. Jim wants to take a look at Apple. Those are the charts that we've got up on our screen here. So, since I was last with you, uh, Jim, Apple formed a new profile. It did that on Friday. The bottom of the profile is 153.67. The center was at 154, 155.64, and the top. 159.60. What do we have take place today? Well, price is trading above the top of that profile. That's bullish. It is now above its green oscillator and change line. What you want to watch for Apple today? The question is, does it close above 161.53? Now, remember, that 53 is going to change maybe by a few pennies or what have you. Um, it's not going to – well, so if it closes above that green oscillator and change line, and just use 160.50 or 160.53 as the number out there, um, then that's going to suggest that price wants to move higher. Move higher to where? Well, the daily says it would like to target 173.74. The weekly says hold your horses. Okay, we are holding our horses. Why? Because there is some resistance or potential resistance right at 164.38. That's that black uh, numbers on the screen out there. That is the center 
of its weekly profile. That's where its descending channel lines come in. Above that, you get up towards the top of the uh, weekly profile, 172.23. That's a descending trend line. The monthly chart says price wants to go target a resistance at 168.79. So if Apple closed above 161.53 or thereabouts, it's going to suggest to move to 164 to 168. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart here for Apple, what is it done pattern-wise? Jim, this created a TD9 count top at 10.30 this morning. It was actually completed at 11. Price took that out immediately. So that pattern has been negated. There is an A to B equals CD to the upside. If there's a bearish reversal candle that completes the next uh, three and a half minutes or so, then you'd have a sell the D point. You'd expect price to pull back to support. Support on a 30 minute time frame is 159 and change. I don't know, call 159.90 to 160.30 out there. Uh, so really watch the end of the day close for Apple. That will help to provide you with information as to what its intent is, and then perhaps what the intent of the end view is. Folks, stay tuned. We've got great programming all lined up uh, next for you, and I'll be back with you tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock sharp on Terrific Tuesday. Have a magnificent Monday. Take care, folks, and thanks for joining us.